Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with DevCentral, and in this Lightboard video, we're going to talk about a real attack story from our Silverline Security Operations Center, our SOC. And in fact, this story involves the largest DDoS attack in the history of Silverline. So it's a pretty, pretty fascinating one. All right, so there is a global financial company that is, the, that is our Silverline customer, right? And I'm just going to put them over here at, you know, company dot com and this was the target attack right the target of the attack well in front of company.com we have silverline um, you know managed services and in this case it was the distributed denial of service uh, you know cloud-based uh, you know uh, service that was protecting company.com right all right and then out here you have the attackers so I'll just put attackers out here and they have a series of you know bots and this bot net uh, with you know thousands of, of bots you know that are attacking this uh, this victim you know website right here this this domain uh, and but then of course you also have legitimate users so I'll just put you know users here that are accessing company.com as well right all right well attached to the company.com domain there's multiple IP addresses, uh, so I'll just put a couple of them here, you know, let's just say 1.2.3.4 and 1.2.3.5, all right, and so those are both associated with this one domain, right? All right, well, there were uh, multiple of these IP addresses were attacked, so there, that, was, that gave us evidence that the attackers were not necessarily going after one IP address, but rather the domain itself, which then had multiple IPs, you know, uh, connected to it. Um, the peak traffic, by the way, that was launched at this thing was 800, and I'll just put it kind of right up here above the Silverline cloud, 840 gigabits per second. That was the max, that was the peak traffic attack, you know, attack traffic that, that came into uh, this victim site right here, right? All right, so initially what happened on this attack is these attackers with their botnet launched at one of these IP addresses, uh, but then they moved to others after that. So the initial attack vector primarily was TCP vectors. So I'll just, I'll put TCP right here. And these are things like TCP send floods where, you know, the attacker sends a, uh, you know, the first part of the TCP handshake, then the victim responds with the second part of the three-way handshake, and then the attacker just doesn't, you know, they don't, they don't ever finish out the handshake. So it's just left open. So there's all these resources being consumed back here. Although in this case, it was, it was here with Silverline, right? Uh, so things like TCP send flood, TCP reset attack, where the attackers are trying to, you know, reset connections uh, for the victim, those kinds of things. Uh, but there were other uh, vectors used like ICMP floods, those kinds of things. But primarily TCP related attacks were coming into uh, destined for company.com, but Silverline was blocking all of these things, right? And so after the initial attack uh, at the first IP address, they moved on to another IP address, uh, one of the other IP, or, or yeah, the other IP addresses, and those primarily used UDP uh, vectors, which, which a lot of DDoS attacks use UDP because it's a connection-less protocol, right? And specifically, uh, I'll just put DNS right here, DNS uh, amplification attacks, right? And so this is where the attackers will find an open DNS resolver out there in the internet somewhere. They'll send a bunch of DNS requests to that open DNS resolver, uh, but then they'll use the victim IP address as the source. Um, and so whenever the uh, DNS servers receive that, then they're going to send their responses uh, over to the victim, you know, in, in these amplification attacks. And, and the reason it's an amplification is because the uh, the uh, you know the the sending part you know the 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 request is much smaller than the response and so you have these little bitty small requests coming from multiple uh, you know uh, you know computers here uh, in this bot net and then the response is this massive response that gets launched against the you know the victim here all right so 
what happened here on Silverline is you, you know you got all these all these things coming in, all these multiple vectors, uh, which by the way, user legitimate users are still trying to get to you know this company.com website as well. All right, so on Silverline there was this layered mitigation approach, is what I'm gonna what I'm gonna call it. So there were many protections that were put in place right here at the edge of the network. Um, and so things like uh, UDP protection, like UDP fragments are looked at. If it's you know, UDP fragments, let's drop those. Uh, maybe look at um, unnecessary IP protocols, so IP layer protocols. Let's, let's look at that and drop anything that is just not needed to come through uh, to, this, you know, to the back end uh, servers. Um, so you can do that first, and that frankly kills a lot of this attack traffic. Uh, but then there are other layers like um, limiting number of packets that certain clients can send in a certain period of time, um, looking at packets that are malformed, you know, things like that, and you can start to take action against those as well. All right, so during the attack, the only, so this is 840 gigabits per second of traffic flooding into Silverline right here, but the, the amount of traffic that made it through to company.com was about 25 megabits per second, all right? So that, if you do the quick math, that's about 0.003% of all of this traffic that's flooding in actually makes it back to company.com. And the cool thing about that is that's, that's about the normal amount of traffic that, uh, that this, you know, that this uh, client would see on, on just a normal non-attack basis, right? And so, um, so the, the really cool thing as well is this, uh, this, this customer of Silverline never saw any kind of degraded service. They, uh, they, they were never shut down or anything like that. And then their customers, you know, these users that are trying to get back here, were able to get back there and do their work and, you know, conduct their financial business or whatever they had to do, right? Um, so this attack lasted for several minutes. Uh, so it wasn't like a days and days kind of thing, but it was several minutes. And I, I think primarily because the attackers, once they launched this massive amount of uh, traffic and saw that it was not working, then they move on to the next, you know, to the next victim kind of thing, right? So great job, Silverline, for protecting the customer. Um, the, uh, the attackers moved on and, you know, they, they were not successful in this, but this was the largest volume um, DDoS attack that Silverline has seen in the history of Silverline. So it's a, it's a fascinating thing. Uh, so I know, I know we say this all the time, if you don't have some kind of DDoS protection in front of your web applications or in front of your applications, uh, then you need, to, you need to make sure you do that. And Silverline's a great option um, because it's not if you're attacked, but when you're attacked because these things happen all the time. It's the world that we live in, right? So, uh, so anyway, fascinating story here. Uh, of this massive DDoS attack that was completely, you know, thwarted by Silverline and they saved the day for this customer. So great job, Silverline. And uh, thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. Hey, if you like this thing, you can click up here on our DevCentral logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.